That's right, I said Monstro. This is the newest, latest, greatest, most top-end bread camera you can get. Uh, it has, it's called the Monstro because it has a monstro size 8K VistaVision sensor inside this body here. On the outside, it actually looks very similar to your normal run-of-the-mill uh, red camera, whether it's a red dragon or a red, um, or a red helium. This sensor is a monstro uh, sized 8K sensor, which is a full frame size sensor, and that's what really differentiates it from other sensors uh, in the RED product lineup and from pretty much every uh, other high end prof professional digital cinema camera. Before we get too much into it, I actually want to talk a little bit about full frame cameras uh, and how these are kind of becoming a new, it's a new paradigm uh, for digital cinema. All three major camera companies that make the highest end digital cinema cameras uh, are now getting into full frame acquisition. And that's uh, the Aerie with their new Alexa large format camera, which was just uh, announced called the, X, the Aerie Alexa LF. Uh, Sony with their brand new uh, Sony Venice camera, uh, which is really trying to, it's kind of like the underdog trying to catch up and uh, make a name for themselves as a, as a top contender in this new space. And Red, who's right up there with, uh, with Aerie as far as uh, cameras go, uh, is, is actually the first out with, the, with this Red Monster VistaVision camera. So really quickly, for those that don't know, what is full frame? Um, Usually when you're talking about cameras, uh, film cameras or digital cinema cameras, you're talking about cameras that have a super 35 millimeter sized sensor. Uh, and that's like a carryover from the old days of when everybody shot film and the, the actual film strip that was running through the camera was a 35 millimeter that was the size of the, of the, of the film, the actual physical film that, would be, that was being spooled through the camera at 24 frames a second. Uh, and most set cameras were developed with the, trying to get to that super 35 millimeter sized uh, sensor because it's so that you would have all of the same characteristics in your image that you would get from the old uh, film cameras and the same the same uh, depth of field, the same uh, field of view, to, and you could also use all of the same uh, lenses that were carryovers from that generation. However, uh, even in old uh, film days, some people were getting more experimental with their acquisition formats and they were trying to get uh, recorded images on on an image plane that was larger than just a super 35 millimeter size frame. Uh, VistaVision was one such attempt that really tried to have something grand and uh, of epic scope and scale. IMAX is a, is a similar thing today with, with their 75 or 70 millimeter film, uh, you know, analog films that are, that are still shot on, on IMAX 70 millimeter film today, uh, but it's not quite the same as a digital uh, a full frame camera. Um, so the monster sensor is, is full frame. Uh, it's much larger than your typical super 35 millimeter frame. As I mentioned before, it means that your field of view is, is going to be quite different. Because you have a larger image plane, your images are going to be naturally a little bit wider than they were if it's a super 35 millimeter sensor. It also means that your depth of field, uh, all things being equal, will be shallower on a full frame sensor than it will on a super 35 sensor. And that can be good or bad, it just needs to be something that you're aware of as a cinematographer when you're trying to uh, pick your shots. And a lot of people really like the full frame sensors for shooting things like big expansive landscapes, big skies, uh, amazing vistas. That's kind of really where this, this sensor will show itself off. One other interesting thing to, notice, to note about VistaVision size sensors is because there's more physical area uh, for all the pixels on the sensor to sit in, the pixel density is actually lower than it would be on a comparable 8K sensor like in the Red Epic W, for instance. The Red Epic W, which is, a, which is called the Helium sensor, it's, it's a great camera, amazing sensor, one of the most, uh, most advanced sensors in the world. The pixel density, uh, the pixels are sit closer to each other on the actual die. And Pixel density is, is important for things like your noise floor. So having a lower pixel density on a, on a monstro size sensor uh, means that your, your low light performance, the, the noise that you're going to see in your video image is going to be reduced. And that's definitely what we see with the Monstro. The Monstro's native ISO is a, is a 1600 ISO. Pretty amazing baseline standard ISO for a camera uh, of this type. And there's a little bit of confusion out there with some people on the, on the online forums confusing Helium and Monstro and the old VistaVision, VistaVision Dragon. So I want to just clarify all that stuff really quick. Um, the original uh, VistaVision or full frame size red camera that was out was called, was the VistaVision Dragon. And there's only, no one really knows exactly except for the people that read, but there's only a handful of those that were ever really in the wild. You never really could buy them in wide availability. Uh, and they were great and they were really cool. Um, but then Red came out with a new uh, 8K Helium sensor, which is a th their Super 35 and is their kind of their default flagship sensor for Super 35 acquisition, either in, in, in Red Weapons or in Red Epic Ws. Um, 
VistaVision Monstro is not the same as, Vista, as uh, 8K Helium. It's still an 8K sensor, but it's a different type of sensor technology. So comparing it in the same class isn't really the same. Monstro is a little bit more advanced, uh, has a different manufacturing process. For all we know, it could be actually be coming from a, from a different supplier in the Red Factory. So they're not the same. However, with that said, people are cutting uh, VistaVision Monstro footage, uh, intercutting it with footage acquired with other RED cameras, and with not too much effort in post, you can make them match each other pretty easily. The, the VistaVision Monstro is a big leap up over the VistaVision, Dra VistaVision Dragon sensor, which was using old sensor technology from the Red, Drag from the Red Epic Dragon. Uh, this is several generations above and beyond that, giving you much better uh, highlight roll off, much better noise floors, like, uh, like we already discussed, and uh, has all of the all of Red's new IPP2 or image pipe image processing pipeline two technology in it, which gives you a streamlined uh, end to end uh, color science program. Forget it for delivering your your footage either in any spec that you want, whether it's a Rec 709, the new HDR Rec 2020 spec, or a, or a digital cinema print, a DCP3 type of spec for like a digital cinema projection or things like that. IPP2, I think, really kind of changes the game uh, for RED cameras, makes them much more versatile, and really kind of streamlines your post-process and, make, and, and makes the images just look much, much better. The nice thing, is, and IPP2 is baked in to RED Monster, just like it is for uh, uh, RED uh, 8K Helium cameras. And really quick, I also want to touch on 8K as a format resolution. You might be asking yourself, hey, there's no such thing, like, I don't have an 8K television in my home. The projector at my local theater is definitely not projecting things in 8K. What's the point of shooting at 8K? 8K K gives you a lot of advantages. It gives you tons and tons of image area acquisition for reframing shots in post, for in increasing magnification, for creating digital camera moves in, in your uh, from a static uh, image in a, in a post production pipeline. In addition to that, you're su basically super sampling. So if you're delivering your final project at you know 2K or 4K. Super sampling at 8K and down resing to that just creates an amazingly clear, crystal, uh, fine image that you can't quite get by any other means. Uh, it's actually really important to note that Panavision, Panavision is being probably one of the oldest and most respected uh, camera companies around. Panavision's latest uh, cinema camera is called the DXL2, is essentially the same thing as a Red Monstro. Panavision teamed up with Red, the, their new flagship, the DXL2, uses a Red Monstro sensor and all the internals are designed by Red. It just has a slightly different looking uh, external housing with a few more features and bells and whistles on it, bells and whistles on it but uh, it does the same things, uh, it has the same image acquisition capabilities that the Red uh, Monstro has, which I think is pretty cool. So there are some important things that you need to remember if you're going to shoot on a Red Monstro. It's a little bit more difficult than just picking up the camera body and then going out and shooting. Uh, you need to make sure that you're going to have the right lens coverage. Most lenses that were designed for the super 35 millimeter uh, image plane size uh, do not have, do not project the right size image circle to fully cover the Monstro sensor. The Monstro sensor itself is uh, this massive honking thing that you'll see inside the body. So your typical th super 35 millimeter lens uh, will is taking the image in the front of the barrel. And, and refracting it inside and pushing it out this way to hit the image plane inside the sensor. Uh, and it's projecting that image on a circle, it's not, even, though it's, even though it's only being recorded by, by the rectangular sensor in there. The image circle that it's projecting uh, varies in size depending on the focal length of the lens you're using. And t especially on wide focal length lenses, uh, the image circle gets smaller and smaller. And when you're using it, those wide lenses that are meant for super 35 millimeter cameras on a camera like a Monstro, that image circle will not fully cover uh, the size of that sensor, so you're going to get extreme vignetting in the corners. And you, in addition to vignetting, you might also get lower detail, uh, uh, luma fall off, and, and other things that you probably want to avoid. So it's important to get lenses that have the ability to cover a full frame sensor. Uh, the good news is that more and more lenses like that are available out there. Here at Brainbox, we have a couple options. I've laid them out here for you on the table. Um, the first ones over here on my right are the, uh, the Zeiss uh, compact zooms. Uh, we have the, the two of them here today. These are two sister lenses, the 28 to 80 and the 70 to 200. These are actually really nice, amazing lenses with actually absolutely minimal breathing uh, and very, very clear, sharp images across the full frame. And they both cover uh, Monstro on, on, you know, from corner to corner just fine. There's also a third lens in the series. I don't have it out here on display yet, um, but we can get it for you here at Brainbox. Over on uh, my left and also on the camera itself, I have the Sigma full frame primes. And these are specially designed for the new crop of, of full-frame digital cameras. Uh, they're all a uniform T1.5, relatively lightweight, and they cover everything from a 14, which is pretty amazing, all the way up to a 135. The 14 is what I have on this, cam on this camera right now, and you can see that I can get the, the other six lenses 
all in that shot, all in a full frame sensor. With that, with you know, that's about you know eight inches in front of the camera plane right now. Th these do, especially on the 14, have a little bit of distortion and a little bit of breathing if I'm doing big focus racks, uh, but not as bad as you might expect. And there's other lens options out there as well. One of the most economical options would be to use uh, cinema modded uh, old uh, still photo lenses that were meant for like a large format uh, still photo camera. Uh, for example, here at Brainbox, you have the Leica R's, which have Duplo Cine mods on them and can cover a full frame sensor. And those are actually relatively affordable. On the high end, all the lens manufacturers are making new high end primes to kind of cover full frame uh, sensors, such as the Leica Thalias, uh, the Cook S7s, uh, Zeiss is making their CP3s. And Ingenue has got a new uh, 24 to 290 that will, that will cover, the 24 to 290 Ultra will cover a full frame sensor as well, as well as the new Ingenue Easy One and Easy Two zooms. So there's definitely more and more options coming into the marketplace that are going to give you excellent, excellent glass characteristics and excellent image quality uh, to pair with your new uh, supersized uh, sensor. However, one of the coolest ways to make use of the Monstro sensor, I think, is to use, uh, an, is to use anamorphic glass. Using anamorphic glass on Super 35 sensors was always not exactly ideal because anamorphic is really stretching the verticals on the sensor and uh, you're losing resolution because you're basically chopping off the sides and only using the, the, ver the vertical sensors, the, the vertical pixels in the middle of your sensor. But with a sensor as big as a Monstro, you can shoot super high resolution anamorphic uh, with really nice glass and get some pretty uh, spectacular uh, results. Uh, so here's a couple shots that we did with this Monstro camera and our Airy Master Anamorphic lenses uh, to kind of show off what this camera can do in anamorphic mode. So let's talk really quickly about how uh, you can set up and operate uh, the menus of this camera to get yourself shooting uh, in a timely fashion. If you're familiar with RED cameras and their menu structure at all, you'll be right at home here because not much has changed. Um, you'll see up at the top of your menu bar that you have all the same characteristics. In the upper left, upper left hand corner, you have your, your frame rate. And when you're in an 8K mode in this camera, you can go all the way to 60 frames per second. So 60K, or sorry, so 60 frames per second at 8K is where uh, the red weapon is where the red weapon monster tops out, which is a pretty astounding data rate. It's capable of 300 megabytes per second uh, data rate uh, recording onto red, uh, mini recording onto uh, red mini mags. One thing I want to point out is if you are shooting anamorphic, I want to just show you how crazy the uh, the anamorphic. Uh, resolution is to shoot 8K anamorphic on the monster sensor at a 2x D squeeze. Your resolution effectively becomes at 8K uh, 16,384 by 4,320. Uh, so the pixel density of the uh, of the 8K monster sensor is actually quite a bit lower than the uh, 8K helium sensor. Uh, it gives you a number of advantages. Uh, Principally, it helps you with your noise floor level, giving you reduced noise uh, in, in low light situations as compared to a higher pixel density camera like an, like an Epic W uh, with a Super 35 uh, 8K helium sensor. In addition to that, uh, RED has done a lot of work on this particular sensor generation to improve it from the old VistaVision dragon sized uh, uh, sensor, really improving um, the latitude. Uh, they're recording up to 17 and a half stops uh, of, of usable dynamic range, uh, which is pretty astounding. And also really working on that highlight roll off and also give, and giving you options within the IPP2 settings to adjust, to adjust your highlight roll off curves to really kind of finesse that image and give you a really, really clean uh, uh, color rendition from like from everything from all the, the blacks to the very to the very very whitest whites. So one thing you'll notice uh, to take advantage of th this camera in its in its best best practices is to really use the IPP2, which is your image post processing pipeline. Uh, to get to that, you ta tap the image tab, and under image pipeline, you can go ahead and uh, and select mode IPP2, or you can go to legacy mode. Legacy is for matching things like the older Red Epic W Dragon, or or, or even a Red MX. Uh, but when you go into IPP2, it'll, it's, it's basically changing, it's mapping your gamma curve to a uniform, um, uh, to, to, a, to a uniform curve that, that'll carry on across multiple generations of your footage so that if you're, uh, so that if you're passing your footage along to an effects house or a post house, uh, it will retain all of the same LUTs or, or looks that you dialed into the camera all the way through to the end and will also be able to, is transferable among RED cameras them, themselves. Uh, down here in the, the uh, output, output color space, uh, because you're recording IPP2 inside, you have to tell this camera what, what transform you want to output for viewing. Uh, so right now I have it set to a Rec. 709, which is your standard HD 
uh, uh, color space. There's also the option in here uh, for a DCI-P3, which is a di digital cinema, if you're hooking up to a projector, or a Rec 2020. Rec 2020 is the new uh, color space rec uh, for HDR capable displays or things like this, things of that nature. Again, like with all RED cameras, this stuff is metadata. It doesn't really affect uh, the raw files that your camera is recording. Um, it's just giving you extra tools to use uh, uh, for, your, for your output transforms. Uh, you also have, can control your tone map and highlight roll-off down here as well. The, uh, the other menu options are to have moved around a little bit from if you're used to a legacy RED camera, but they're all in there and to some extent you might just have to hunt in the menus a little bit to find the one, the menu option that you're particularly looking for. You can of course still record your dual formats like you can with other uh, DSMC2 RED bodies, uh, recording both your R3D uh, RAW file alongside a proxy file recorded into either ProRes or uh, DNX HD for those of you that like AVIDs out there. And in addition to IPP2, one of the great things about it is to have uh, true 3D LUTs that you can uh, create in offline software or in the camera itself and load them and share them amongst other cameras and create LUTs that are very specific for, with very specific looks. And these, and these 3D LUTs um, have so many different variables in them that you can get really customizable and creative. You can also go online and, uh, and download custom LUTs from other cinematographers around the world and, and see what they're experimenting with and playing with to kind of create really cool in-camera looks. And you do that by the 3D LUT tab on the camera here and let, lets you import or export a LUT on your image. There's none in here at the moment, um, but we have a bunch here at BrainBox and we're happy to show them around to you and, uh, and play around with them along with you because we're still learning about the LUTs as well. All right, guys, thanks again for watching and tuning in to check out the new uh, 8K Monstro here at BrainBox. If you ever do want to rent one, you can call us or email us and uh, we'll be happy to hook you up. And uh, we're very, very excited to have this here in our inventory and really excited to see where full frame cinematography is going gonna, is gonna to go in the years ahead. Uh, I also want to just give a quick shout out to the guys from Toronto that were here at BrainBox the other day. They say they're big fans of the videos and watch all of them. That's awesome. And also to all of you at home who we never get to meet face to face, I hope you find these of some value and uh, hopefully someday we'll get to meet you here as well. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.